polygamous co-leader ordered the murders of at least 25 people, many from beyond the grave, in a tale of fear, control, and a mission to create the kingdom of God here on earth. If you have a keen interest in true crime, unsolved mysteries, and paranormal events, you're in the right place. I am dedicated to bringing you fresh content in this area at least three times a week, even more. If these topics captivate you, as they do to me, please feel free to show your support by liking and encouraging Meg Lovin to subscribe to the channel. Now, let's dive into today's story. Next, let me take you back in time to a world where a man named Erbil Labaran reigned over his followers like a dark prophet. Erbil's children raised, to, raised him to see as the one true voice of God on earth, believing they were celestial beings destined to walk in his shadow. But beneath this facade of divine purpose, there lurked sinister truths. Erbil, a man of many faces, had wives many of whom were just gross when they were married to him. Abuse was rampant, both towards his own flesh and blood and others in his fold. But Orville's terror, terror didn't stop there. He was a man with a taste for blood, ordering hits like a mob boss on anyone who dared cross him. Okay, so let's take a step back. The Mormon church, you see, it had long since turned its back on polygamy, the practice of having more than one spouse. But the stain of this practice lingered, like a shadow refusing to fade. Those who clung to this belief were outcasts, forced to the fringes. Now enter Alama Labaran Sr., a staunch believer in polygamy. He uprooted his life, taking his two wives and eight children to the dusty reaches of North Mexico. There, in the middle of nowhere, he built Colonia Labaran, a farm, a commune, a haven for those like him. When Alma passed in 1951, his son Joel stepped up. Joel, a man of vision, found a way to dance around the U.S. laws, even establishing his community as an official church in Utah. Erville, his younger brother, was his right hand. For a time, Erville split his days between Utah and a new settlement in Baja Peninsula, Los Molinos, but peace was short-lived. In the late 1960s, a rift tore through the heart of this community. Erbil, hungry for power, turned against Joel. The group splintered, loyalty divided, and then things took a turn for the darker. Erbil, claiming divine guidance, broke away to form his own church in San Diego, a church with a sinister agenda. It was as, as of God himself whispered in his ear, urging him to kill. The climax of this twisted tale came on August 20th, 1972. Erville, playing the role of a vengeful god, sent his loyal followers to Mexico with a deadly mission, to kill Joel. As he claimed God had commanded, Joel met a brutal end, beaten and shot by those who called him brother. Two years later, Erville faced justice, or so it seemed. Convicted for Joel's murder in Mexico, it looked like his reign of terror was over. But fate, or perhaps corruption, intervened. An appeal, a technicality, and Erville walked free. Rumors whispered of bribes, of dark deals struck in the shadow rooms. But this was just the beginning. Joel's death was a spark that ignited a firestorm of violence, revenge, tearing through the heart of Los Molinos. Erville's followers, driven by rage and loyalty, laid waste to the commune claiming two more lives in their wake. Over Lebaran, not drunk on power and believing he was acting on divine orders, set his sights on other Mormon leaders, those who dared to share his polygamous beliefs, yet stood apart from him. In April 1975, a minister named Bob Simmons, known for his work with Native Americans, met his end on Erbil's command. But Erbil, hunger for dominance, knew no bounds. In 1977, he commanded his 13th wife and her daughter to assassinate Brulan C. Allard, a leader in the Apocalyptic United Brethren. They carried out the deed without hesitation. Later, they claimed Erbil wielded mind control and fear like weapons, bending his followers to his will. The madness spiraled further. Erbil now turned against his own blood, eating any family member who so much as whispered about leaving his cult, was marked for death. He ordered his 10th wife, Vanda White, 
to murder a follower named Dean Glover for trying to escape. Vanda, eventually caught, was sentenced to life for this murder and suspected of another. Then came a deed so heinous it chilled the soul. Irver ordered the killing of his own daughter, Rebecca, just 17 years old and pregnant, for daring to dream of a life away from his dark world. But the terror didn't end there. Even beyond bars, Irvel's influence spread like a shadow. The church, constantly on the move, evaded the law, splitting the time between the U.S. and Mexico. The law, however, was closing in. In 1979, Irvel was arrested, and by 1980, he was sentenced to life for ordering Roland Allred's death. Yet his grip on his followers remained unbroken. They saw him as the ultimate prophet, hanging on his every word, even as he languished in prison. There, Irvel penned a new scripture, the Book of the New Covenant, a twisted Bible with terrifying command, kill those who try to leave or disobey. Twenty copies of this dark tome circulated among his followers, unbeknownst to prison guards. Hidden within his pages was a hit list, name of those who Irvel claimed had betrayed God and his cult. Irvel's death in 1981 seemingly natural did little to quell the storm he had unleashed. His followers, still fervent, continued their bloody crusade. Two days after his death, Verlan Labarin, a name intertwined with Irvel's dark legacy, died in a suspicious car crash in Mexico City. Then seven years later, on June 27, 1988, at 4 p.m. sharp, terror struck again. Four murders executed at the same time in Texas. Among the victims was Dwayne Chunuif, a former follower who had escaped Irvel's grasp, and tragically his eight-year-old daughter. They were gunned down while running errands, a brutal reminder of Irvel's far-reaching and deadly influence. The streets were not safe, not even for Irvel's own kin. His stepson, Eddie Marston, he fell victim to this relentless violence, gunned down as he strolled down a local street. And at the same time, Mark Chinowith, a father of six, was brutally shot in his office in downtown Houston. These murders, carried out cold precision, seemed to prove that Herbal's influence stretched beyond the grave. These killings were soon dubbed the Four O'Clock Murders, a name that echoed with airy precision. In the two decades that followed, the long arm of the law caught up with five individuals including one of Irvel's own daughter, all, con all convicted for their roles in these heinous crimes. But much of what happened in those tri trials remained shrouded in mystery. The testimonies and documents sealed away from public eyes. The Book of the New Covenants, Orville's twisted manifesto, never saw the light of the public scrutiny. Yet, whispers say the members of the Lebaran family digitized it, preserving its dark teachings. Some of Irvel's offspring continue to walk his path, convinced of their divine mission to establish the kingdom of God on earth. But the full toll of this cult's brutality may never be known. Some victims remain unaccounted for. Their fates lost in the shadows. In 1989, a chilling development occurred. Six of Irvel's children vanished from their foster home, suspected to have returned to the cult's embrace in Mexico. Rumors persisted of a hidden, hidden refuge, a dark sanctuary for the remnants of this twisted legacy. In 2017, one of Irvel's daughters, Anna Lebron, broke her silence. In an interview with the BBC, she painted a harrowing picture of life within the cult, a nomadic existence of squalor, hunger, and fear. Irvel's grip of terror was absolute. Defiance was unthinkable. The outside world was painted as an enemy justifying their constant flight from the law. Within this grim world, children were subjected to harsh discipline, and the rules of marriage were twisted and contorted to Irvel's will. Female children were deemed ready for marriage at 15, sometimes even younger, a practice that Irvel himself had hired to in his choice of brides. The legacy of Irvel Lebron is one of the bloodshed and tyranny, with an estimated 25 to 30 lives claimed directly or indirectly by his commands. His cult, notorious in its infamy, continued to cast a dark shadow, drawing comparisons to the horror wrought by the likes of Charles Manson. So, 
That concludes today's episode. If you found today's tale intriguing and insightful, I'd love if you could hit the like button and share your thoughts in the comment section. And don't forget to encourage Meg Lovin to subscribe to my channel and turn on all his notifications to stay updated with my latest content. Your support means a lot to me. Thank you.